Hello, friends, and welcome to Empower YouTube Podcast. I'm your host, Natasha Paris, and I'm excited because you are in the building with me. You can be anywhere in the world, but you have chosen to be here with me, and I am so humbled and appreciative. Let me tell you about this show. Each and every single week, we continue to empower you to greatness that is truly going to help you, whether you are a person that have experienced a heartbreak, have gone through a divorce, or have endured levels of trauma of any kind, or you're just a person trying to rebuild their life and themselves, and now you are finally ready to live a life full of abundance, joy, and peace, then this show is for you. So with that said, thank you again for being here. I am extremely grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you because together we are empowered for greatness. You ready? Let's go. Hello, hello, it's your girl, Natasha Paris, the empowerment strategist, as well as the mental health therapist expert. And I am super excited because here on today's episode, I have the pleasure on the Empower YouTube podcast to bring to the table, Miss Danica Coleman Milner, who is the national treasurer of the Be Well organization, as well as she's been an educator for the past 24, 25 years, and she's also a mother. And so today we're going to talk about how she has rose to leadership while managing her family and creating this wonderful life balance. So let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. I'm so excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what do you do and what is Be Well? Be Well is black women education leaders, and I have enjoyed being a part of that and having a a, a group of sisters that can relate to Mm. the things that I have gone through. It is an awesome, awesome organization to be a part of. Okay, so tell us a little bit about you. Well, I would categorize myself as a Southside Richmond girl. Yes, (laughs) Southside, okay. Southside Richmond girl. Yes. um, Who came from a, a great home, great family. Mm-hmm. I had some good people supporting me mm-hmm. um, beyond my family. Okay. I went to went to Huguenot High School in Richmond Public Schools. Yes. Um, stayed here in Richmond wow. and went to VCU undergrad and I've moved on to education. I started out as a sixth grade teacher at middle school. Yes. <laughs> yes. Middle school. I always give it up to middle school There's teachers. A special place in heaven. Yes, for I'm a sure. middle school teacher. I'm sure. <laughs> but I transitioned out of that. Did you? Okay. I okay. did. Okay. I did. I moved on to high school. Okay. And I taught chemistry there for ten years. Chemistry. Yes, ma'am. I yes, love ma'am. That. Yes, ma'am. So you're all in the sciences. Okay. Yes. I didn't do well in chemistry. That's why I'm a therapist. But okay, <laughs> that's another story altogether. Okay. <laughs> but that's my career but overall I'm, I'm just who you see what you see is what you get mm. nothing more nothing less um how i ended up in the place that i am is because I'm, i lead by my heart mm. um all my the work that i do what i the energy i put into the things that i do okay. is because it's in my heart it's my passion it's the things that drive me Okay, so let's talk about what drives you. How, are, how have you been able to, you had wonderful, humble beginnings, right? And you stayed within Richmond, you stayed in this area, mm-hmm. and now you're teaching in this area. So talk about the organization, how did those two come together? I know it's, it's like two questions, but how did those two, you're being in, organ, you know, being in the organization as a national treasure, mm-hmm. National treasure. Oh, I love that. Right? National <laughs> treasure. Okay. As well as you being an educator, how did those two lives come together and what made you decide to be a part of Be Well? 
Well, I tell you, it, it really was a phone call. Okay. Um, the founder of Be Well is a, a close friend of mine, and okay. we worked together. We started out at Thomas Jefferson High School together. Okay, okay. And we both ended up moving um, out of the classroom okay. and going into leadership. And she, she and I had a shared experience, not at the same time, okay. um, but we both became assistant principals at one point. Okay. And both of our divisions that we became came assistant principals at mm -hmm. were predominantly white um, counties. Okay. So with that being said, we had shared stories. And what were some of your stories? Did you have some struggles? Did you have some adjustments or transitions I, as, I, a, as an African-American woman in a predominantly, you know, white um, school system, mm -hmm. rising to the top, because mm -hmm. oftentimes what I know as I work with women in the C-suite, mm -hmm. they oftentimes might be, especially if you're an African-American woman, mm -hmm. you might be the only African-American woman in the boardroom and woman in the boardroom um, or conference room. So mm -hmm. how do you manage being in that, that place where it was a transition and what were some of the barriers? Well, to be honest, you have to know what you know. Okay. And, and, and walk in that space with confidence. Um, a lot of times, as we, as we talk and discuss maybe behind closed doors as women in education or even in just leadership in general, yes. how you're not necessarily heard that you speak, mm. <laughs> but you're not heard. And it's always this constant struggle of having to prove yourself in those spaces. Wow. And so, and I learned that lesson very early. My choice in universities was based upon, I came from a predominantly black high school. I needed a different experience so I could understand how I may be perceived in those spaces. Okay. Um, and from, from that point on, from, um, undergraduate, even into my profession, um, going to be the assistant principal, I've had to prove myself. So I had to give me an example. So when you say, because you're speaking to the masses, right? Mm -hmm. um, when we say speaking to the masses, mm -hmm. we have lots of viewers who are going to take some golden nuggets and say, mm -hmm. I've learned from this. I know what to do now, but I'm also more than, more than anything else. I'm not alone. I'm well, not alone. So talk about what was it that you weren't being heard about? Because you said you spoke, mm -hmm. but you weren't being heard. Mm -hmm. Give me some more info on that. So basically, if in leadership, so you're giving directives, you're sharing directives and, and wanting to move. Every, every administrator's goal is to, to move the needle forward. Okay. So the division that I was in, their, their scores were good. Okay. Good. <laughs> but if they're if you're at 80 percent, there's still another 20 to achieve. Yes. And so when you you're looking at the data and I, I pull I, I function from, you know, I'm not going to just tell you. Mm -hmm. I want you to see it for yourself. So when I put the numbers where they needed to be some it there, there was some obvious um, issues in terms of who needed the greatest amount of help in that okay. division. Okay. So there was differences in when you're talking about your students with disabilities, your, your, your students of color, there was differences in their scores versus everybody else's scores. Sure. And I don't want to say that directly because I want you to see it. And then we can talk about how we can move forward. But instead of focusing on working together to move forward, that focus was more so is, so what are you insinuating? I'm not insinuating, it's the data that's saying it. So now let's talk about how we can move. And, we, and what was difficult for me was getting them to focus on what's the main thing, because you continuously get pushback as to, well, this is the way we've always done it. Do okay. you believe that pushback, Danica, was mm -hmm. because of who you were? how you presented yourself or who you were versus the data, right? It had all to do with? I do. And the reason why is because when administration changed, where I came in with a black female as an administrator, and then when it changed to where it was just the polar opposite, it was a white, fe white um, male that was in leadership, the same message that was shared oh, okay. was received differently. 
Okay. So, and it was the same message. <laughs> same, same message. But different messenger. But, but received different messenger and received differently okay. as well. Okay. And so how did you feel when that was obvious that that was the case? Did that, was that a blow to your self-esteem? Was that ammunition for you to move or power to move in a different direction? Like, what did you take from that information that, or that messaging about who you are as this assistant principal, woman in leadership? It didn't change who I felt that I was. Okay. So, that never changed. Good. What what did have to, what I struggled with was trying to figure out. Okay, if this is the challenge, how do I move maneuver around it? Yes. You know, where is the support that's going to help me maneuver around it? And in, in a in a situation like that, there there may or may not be that support. Um, but I did have a, 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 I was oversaw both science and math as okay. a, uh, um, as an AP. And so in that situation, we strategized in math because their scores were um, lower. So I worked with that team of teachers and it increased by, I believe it was like 20 or 30 percent. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. OK, so when they saw that, <laughs> OK, so this is what we're doing in this particular area. Let's try and see if you can, you see the difference. So now we have work to do here as well. So we started to work together as a team to okay. write curriculum and things of that nature. So, so. it was because, so it was because you actually provided proof and you had evidence that you had just did. It wasn't mm -hmm. based on studies that were taken somewhere else mm -hmm. or overall da data, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It was primarily what you had did with a smaller group of individuals mm -hmm. or teachers mm -hmm. and you were able to gain or achieve those goals. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. okay. So once you see that data doesn't lie. Okay. So now how can we move? Okay. And so just want to say, you did that. It didn't change who you were. No. It just empowered you to, to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. As a mother, mm -hmm. dealing with that at work, mm -hmm. how were you able to balance it all? Because oftentimes women who are dealing with challenges and obstacles and restrictions and limitations, I can go on and on with words, right? Mm -hmm on the job or career or professional frame of reference, right? How do you go home and still be that mom and not take out your stress, like finding that life balance? Well, one of the things that I subscribe to is I have to leave work at work. Mm. I have to leave work at work, whether that means I come in a little bit early or stay a little bit late, but if I leave, I have to be mom, I have to be present. Mm -hmm. The same achievements that I want my students in my building to have, I want my son to have. And that's that's who I've given to the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna invest in him as well. But also, one of the, one of the things that, um, going back to Be Well, Be Well provides you a safe place mm -hmm. to get that out. So you don't have to take it out okay. on your on your family, and, yes. and I don't have a husband at home. But you don't want to take that to your husband oh, either, or your, or your sister, or your, sister, or your friends, in, or your anybody. neighbor, or the person yes. driving next to you. Yes, yes. Be well provided a village, mm -hmm. a village where I could say, "This is what happened today at work." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes, this happened to me at work. And so we're having that conversation, and it pours. That opportunity to get that out is a way to be able to pour back into yourself and get up and oh. start all over again the next day. So, you know, I'm those who, who watch my <laughs> podcast are big on the, you know, three points, right? Because mm -hmm. we want it to be action steps. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that you had said was that you left work at work. Mm -hmm. Second, you are part of this. And, and for those who are subscribed and watching this, you have to definitely check out Be Well. And we will definitely have that information in the show notes um, because it is an amazing organization that will support Absolutely. women in that C-suite who are looking for that support. So the second piece of advice or recommendation would be 
be a part of a group of women who hear you. Right. Find your village. Find your village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would be that third point? Managing and balancing life. Figure out what gives you peace. So for me, in quiet and meditation, mm -hmm. surrounding myself with candles, um, music gives me peace. Mm -hmm. So finding that some, some people enjoy being an artist, mm -hmm. some people enjoy being a um, musician, but find what brings you mm. peace, which speaks to your soul. Mm. And then whenever you need to step away, you can find, mm -hmm. reground yourself in yes. those spaces by finding your peace. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I am a big proponent of health and wellness when it comes to me, you know, especially as a licensed clinician, everyone says to me, you know what? And figuratively, right. You know, it's like, can you, can you just hold my bag for a second? My bag of like trauma, my bag of sadness, my bag of, Oh my gosh, he just left me. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. And they never come back. Right. Yes, yes, <laughs> so yes. holding on to that bag. So yes. I have to find a way to release those bags. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And so that's what I'm hearing from you. It's like being in a place where you are going to get centered. You're going to find what makes you. And I'm big on not happy. Right. Because happy is fleeting. Mm -hmm. Finding your joy, which is oh, everlasting. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Finding that joy. Joy. Joy is something that overcomes. It starts from the toes and works its way up. <laughs> yes. Find your joy. Because happy could be just a smile. Yes. And to me, if it's just a smile, that could still be your mask, yes. but joy fills your entire spirit. Mm. Yeah. I love that. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna have to use that one. You, you. Yes, <laughs> I think you can create something that will go for you. Okay, joy from the bottom of your feet to your tip of your head. I love that, it mm. fills your soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just got just goosebumps just mm -hmm. saying that. And one of, one of the things that, um, Whenever I felt like I have been in a place that when my mind tells me I'm in a place that I don't deserve to be in, mm. I can't call the exact scripture it is, but it states that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Mm. And so sometimes I, I will have to keep repeating that okay. in my mind. Mm. I'm being called. This is heart work. So when you know it's in your heart, mm -hmm. you're being called and he'll qualify you once you get there. Yes. So that leads me to, and I think that we can take that and just plug it into my question. Mm. What would be that one thing that you would want someone to take from this? In addition to the three points, right? Mm -hmm. The three mm -hmm. pieces, the three golden nuggets. What would you say to someone who is in that place of leadership, having their barriers, the barriers that exist as you mm -hmm. had initially, but you were, mm -hmm. you managed to get through it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would be that word of wisdom, especially as they balance, you know, work-life balance? Mm -hmm. What would you say? They're dealing with this, but then they still have to go home and and really support their mate, their children, their aging parents, whatever that might mm -hmm. look like. What would you say if you only had two minutes? I'll say that prioritizing yourself mm -hmm. is just as important as taking care of others. Mm -hmm. You can't, as and we say it sometimes just on a whim, you can't pour from an empty cup, but that is so yes. true. So if that means that on a Saturday when you know your whole entire house need to be clean and you're the only person <laughs> that's going to keep it clean. <laughs> right, right. If you feel like laying there, mm. lay there and enjoy that space. If that, if that means that you feel like, okay, I have about $100 in my account. Mm. 
I'm going to take this $10 because I know I can't spend it off. I'm going to take this $10 and do get my eyebrows done. I don't mm. care what it is. Take care of yourself. Prioritize you. And everything else will work itself out. I love that. <laughs> I, this is, this is just so amazing. Thank you. It's been absolutely amazing for me as well. Yes, yes. And so with that said, with that said, I want you, you know what I say, be empowered for greatness because without greatness, there's no you. And without you, there's no greatness. And we had the pleasure of having such an amazing, great woman on this Thank podcast you. episode who shared some words of wisdom. So take it and run with it and really give it to yourself more than anyone else, right? All right, see you on the next episode. Bye. Awesome. Yes. If you are loving this content and our time together as we become empowered for greatness and you want to connect with me more, I would love for you to come and check out my self-empowerment scholars. It's my monthly empowerment sessions where we take all of the materials learned on the podcast and apply it and study it and take it to the next level. So join me over at Empower You, the letter U, to right? The number two dot com forward slash join, or you can text the word empower to 571-464-6511. That's text the word empower to 571-464-6511. Also, if you've ever gained an ounce of wisdom or the episode resonated with you, I simply ask that you do four things. The first is I want you to subscribe right now if you have not done so already. The second is I want you to hit that five star button on your favorite platform. The third is I want to hear from you. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear how it has resonated for you. In addition, the last, I want you to share this message with someone. It allows us to spread the message of empowerment to those who are desperately in need. So I look forward to seeing you on the next episode and I want you to be what? Empowered for greatness. See you soon. Bye.